Hello everyone. Today we have another exciting presentation from i80386SX. I'm going to uh, do a quick review on this Digit Now USB 2.0 video grabber. I got it for a grand total. You can see in the phone of ten dollars and fifty-four cents from Amazon. I bought it because I was hoping to have something a little bit more modern than my Walmart special that only works on one computer ever built. I had a TV tuner card that I inherited from a friend that I didn't think worked, but there's another video out there that I did recently and I was able to get the card working. But this thing's so cheap that it's not worth the hassle to return it. But we'll see how this one performs versus the PCIe card. I'm gonna open this with one hand. Pretty simple adapter. It's the composite and S-video. USB 2.0. Doesn't even require an external power supply. Let's plug this thing in. See if it does any good. That is setting up a device. AV to USB 2.0. And this is an older HP Elite book with an i3 in it, so this thing is not a powerhouse by any means. And device is ready. Let's see what else came with the digit now. Trying to do it one handed is always fun. Comes with a CD. And it looks like it does come with a user manual. And let's see, we'll go to our device manager and let's see if it actually detects that way. As a camera and a sound device. I don't think it did, but we shall see. Go pull it up real quick here. Well, yes it did. Yep, we got an AV to USB 2.0. And sound and video controllers, USB 2.0 mic. And well, before I get to it any more into this, the, there's the user requirements. And it's kind of hilarious because they do kind of conflict here. I'll show you that later. Go read the... Oh, what's this card? Oh, it's a thank you for buying DigiNow. Hey, this is... I uh, wanted to show you the back of this card. It kind of tells you the specs. And notice at the bottom, very bottom, it says it supports Windows 2000 XP Vista 7, 8, and 10. Maybe at the end of this video, if I'm feeling up to it, I want to try a Windows 2000 machine just to see if it detects and it'd be quite impressed if I was able to get anything out of an operating system that's been out of support for 10 years but and it tells you the contents of the package nothing fancy here's the CD USB video grabber with audio it does have a HTVHS, it looks like it's a piece of software. Comes with a product key. So, kind of one mark on this. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly the fault. Let's go through the user manual. I'm sure at some point it's gonna... Yeah, a few pages of English, so kind of one mark against this uh, I don't know if it's necessarily the manufacturer's fault or not or who if there's really any blame to go around but most computers don't come with an optical drive so it's a little bit of a small hassle to get this off of a onto a disk or off the disk and onto a flash drive or network storage but with the magic of video editing I'm going to do just that and I will be right back and 
get this disc onto a flash drive. And I am back, and if you actually had an optical drive and you popped this disc in, this is what you would come up with. It probably would have automatically loaded some kind of menu. Let's, I'll do the auto run. If I can work the touchpad. And this is what it comes up with. So we'll install VHS to DVD. And I believe this particular laptop also has Windows 10 the 2004 update. It's uh, Holmes Tech VHS to DVD SE. Start menu, and there we go. Hard drive light is going pretty constant, so must be doing something. Oh, it's installing another program. And, it, okay, so it wants to install Adobe Reader, a very old version. I'm going to see if I can cancel out of that. We don't need that. And, well, it let me cancel out of it, so we'll go finish and we'll exit. And new icons. We got this Hones Tech VHS to DVD 3.0. And we got the user guide, which is, uh, I believe, is pretty much going to be the same thing as what the little booklet is. We shall... I'm not going to go through this in great detail, but well, this basically tells you how to use the software. So, I don't know if I have a, just for giggles here, we'll bore you with the details if I have Adobe Reader on here. It doesn't look like it, but not important. All right, so at this point, you can close out this window and, yeah, the new edge is here. Great. that light off I don't know I don't know why that reflection is there but must be a light in the room but anywho let's open up Holmes Tech VHS 2 DVD and that product key I had earlier this is where you would enter that so with the magic of video editing I will be right back as soon as I enter that key in and I am back so once you get the product key entered you'll get you'll come to this screen one note of caution, if you have a webcam, the program's likely going to default to that webcam. So to change that from the webcam over to your uh, digit now, you go to options and you make sure the AV to USB 2.0 is selected. And same drill, microphone, USB 2.0 mic. The rest of it can stay the same. So, for the purposes of this video, I am just going to see what we can do if this thing's even any good. Not going to go through the whole process of burning a DVD because, one, I don't have an optical drive on this computer, and two, for my purposes, I generally don't need that. If you want me to work with that, I definitely can upload another video. I'm going to see if I can connect these one-handed. So, I guess once again with 
video editing. I will be right back as soon as I get these connected. And I am back once again, and I connected the DigiNow to this old dish Samsung camcorder, which I probably paid 200 bucks too much for years and years ago. So let's see if we can actually play something. And this is some rando compact LTE light that I'm just booting off of the... As you can tell, my camera is not the best, but it was a cheapie and it works for this exercise. So, anywho, we know that the preview part of this works, so I am going to see if I can stop it there. See if I can go back. Okay. See if I can go back. I gotta... It's been so long since I used this camera, I don't know how to use it very well, apparently. <whistles> Try it again. So now if you actually want to capture something, you go do this record. So let's do that. And each individual device will probably have display options that you may have to get rid of. I know this the Samsung camcorder has battery life and your SD card and all that fun stuff. Like I said, not a very good point and shoot camera, camcorder at all. I'm going to hit stop and so it looks like we have a new video so we'll go to our documents as I believe that's where it dumped it yep sure enough and it made an mpg file I don't know if VLC will play that we're gonna try That plays it just fine.
And, well, just from one minute worth of video, it looked like it handled that task just fine. So, for, I guess for 10 bucks, you really can't go wrong. You'll have a perfectly playable file. And if you've got that uh, ant's wedding you've got to retrieve and modernize, this would be the perfect tool to do it. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of editing tools in this and whatnot, I'm sure. If you really want me to go into this, I can do that in another video. I frankly don't care. But if you do, that's different. And this is where you would burn your disc, but... Yeah, I'm not sure where we got that. Oh, great title. Let's see if we just unclick that. Yeah, it looks like it tries to put a menu on there of some kind, no matter what you do, but again, for, for 10 bucks, you can easily burn a DVD with this, or a DVD video, do like a VHS to DVD, or camcorder to DVD, or in my case, I like the digital file. It'll create a perfectly playable file, so I say for 10 bucks, this thing does just fine. So, if you have any comments, questions, or constructive criticism, always feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, we have an encore presentation for this video. Yes, I had dug out a laptop that does run Windows 2000. It's a Pentium 3 running at 1 gigahertz, which technically beats the requirements on the back of the card. Uh, so, let's see what it does. Looks like my adapter got bent a little bit. Well, that looks like uh, we're going to fall flat on our faces on this one. Let's see. This computer does have an optical drive, so let's see if the disc... ...will actually read something. App manual. Well, we'll find out. Let's we'll try and start a driver again. So yeah, um, so <laughs> there's no driver on this disc. This just looks to be Strictly software, no actual driver. Let's see what it does. We'll run the software. We'll see what it does. If anything. If we go according to the hardware installation manual, you will notice that it just says connect the USB to AV smart grabber to computer's USB 2.0 port.
run through that. Great. Okay, well, I will give that a go. So it looks like we were stopped in the middle here. Unfortunately, it did not install a driver, so what I will do next, I will go get Internet Explorer 6 and see if there is a driver for Windows 2000 for this AV to USB 2.0. And I will be back with my results either way. Hello again. As you can tell, some things changed since we tried the Windows 2000 experiment. We are, one, running Windows XP, and two, we went from the Compact Evo to the IBM ThinkPad. And I'll show you shortly why I went and switched out the computer entirely, even though the Compact does run Windows XP just fine. But quick, we'll have to install the lovely software that came with the unit. You can tell from the hard drive light, it's still chugging along. And, okay, this looks like it's got to install some additional Microsoft stuff. I know there's a slight reflection in the screen from the light. And standard Windows XP junk. I got install the Adobe stuff, which I hope it doesn't require a, a restart, because I'm going to be mildly upset if it does. I believe this particular computer has a Pentium M of unknown speed. The Compact Evo I tried this with had a Pentium 3 of 1 gigahertz. Yes, hey, so I'm going with the Adobe installer just in case this program for whatever reason does choke if it doesn't see a PDF reader of some kind. Uh, Windows 10 has its own built into it. Windows 2000 and XP do not. Uh, yes, gotta love the optimization process. Alright, so finish, and I'm glad it did not ask for a reboot. So now, I got uninstall the wireless card to do this. Now we're in. And it looks like this is going to install just fine. At least I think it's going to. 
There you go. Now it's starting to find stuff. Okay, well, we're rolling. It's installing a lot of stuff for a little adapter. It cost me $9.99, but I guess if it works, it works. And that's all she wrote on that, so close out a device manager and let's go into the program. I think I clicked on it. Alright, gotta enter the product key again, so I'm going to do that real quick. I know this software is readily available from the manufacturer of this uh, encoder, but I'm not sure if the product keys are unique in any way, shape, or form. I want to say they're probably not for 10 bucks, but who knows? And survey says we got black screen. There we go. The reason why I switched over to this computer is uh, this has USB 2.0 ports on it. The Compaq Evo N600C has USB 1.1 and anytime I try to do anything within the program it just sat there and didn't respond. So let us do a record and let's see how the Pentium M keeps up. Looks like it's keeping up reasonably well. And the compact you see actually in this video, you will see in another video down the road. stop it and that's all she wrote on that there we go so I don't know why I did that but let's see if the eh, validate windows okay more Microsoft safeguards I have no idea if this file's... Oh, yeah, it's going to play just fine. And I don't know if you could hear hear that at all, but it definitely is playing the sound like it's supposed to. So, 
I think with that in mind, I think we pretty much uh, beat this horse to death. Uh, for 10 bucks, it keeps up just fine. It looks like it's a fine piece of software. And if you're like me and you don't need all the extra cutesy stuff that this offers, you could probably use a freeware program. I think a Vidmux, I apologize if I'm butchering the pronunciation of that, but I use that for a lot of my YouTube uploads. And when you just need straight video, that's a great tool to learn. So again, if you have any uh, comments, concerns, and constructive criticism, leave them in the comments.